All right, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome everyone, all the viewers and watchers from the How I Learn Arabic stories. I'm bringing you guys another amazing sto story, inshallah, from other, our brother uh, Zafir. Is it Zafir or Zafir? I always have problems with the. Yeah, Zafir with Zafir. Yeah. No, طيب. Yeah. That's the, the problem of, uh, you know, writing Arabic names in, uh, <laughs> in, uh, in English. But yeah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. First of all, to you. How are you? Alhamdulillah, fiqh. So I'm going to give you guys a little introduction about our guest today. So this brother, his name is Zafir Mughal. If I'm pronouncing it well. <laughs> He's yeah, 20, that's all right. <laughs> 23 years old, lives in London. He's a graphic designer by profession. Uh, you guys can check him out in mogolgraphics.co.uk. The link is going to be uh, in the description. And uh, he went to study in Nasr City. Nasr City, Medina to Nasr, pretty known for all of those Western uh, students who went to, to study once in their life in, in Egypt. I'm pretty sure they went through Nasr City and they probably got stolen by one of them taxi drivers. <laughs> so, yeah, that was in 2017. And you spent over a year studying Arabic. صح. So, yes. Alhamdulillah. Uh, you know that's that's amazing that I'm actually having the opportunity to uh, to uh, to interview brothers and sisters who who kind of had the same you know journey as me in terms of learning the Arabic language and and uh, and and Egypt is a is a place known for their their mastering of knowing how to teach those, uh, you know, those non-natives uh, Arab speakers. Yeah. So yeah. I want to ask you, first of all, um, what, what drives you to, you know, to just take your luggages and be like, okay, I'm, I'm out, I'm going to Egypt to study Arabic? No, uh, Bismillah, it, it was, it's kind of similar to... Uh, to, to what you're trying to do uh, yourself uh, in terms of having a business that you can take anywhere around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been self-employed for a few years now uh, with my graphic design business. So I can literally take my laptop anywhere around the world and uh, I'm not restricted to any location. So literally, uh, I, I, I studied in, um, in a secondary school, an Islamic secondary school, so I did an Arabic GCSE qualification. Uh, okay. I didn't do too well, but but I had a little bit of a foundation. Like I knew what bait was and I knew what rajul was. Uh -huh. So, uh, but then uh, literally a few years ago, one brother said, like, you're self-employed. You're not restricted by location. Uh, why don't you go somewhere and study Arabic or something? No. And I literally thought, I, I thought about it and, uh, you know, there was nothing stopping me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I literally made the decision. I told my parents, I booked a flight. I found out from the brothers where I can live, uh, expenses, how much I need to save up, and uh, just made the decision. No, alhamdulillah. It's actually amazing because now that you say it, when I was in my first year in Alex, Alexandria, uh, there was yeah. a, a brother who was a graphic designer by profession as well. Uh, his website yeah. is strictly, strictly sunnadesigns.com. And, uh, okay. and I got inspired by him when it comes in terms of, uh, because I always, I always thought like, this brother, he was there like for years. Like, like, I think at that time it was in between five and 10 years. And I was amazed. Wow. I was like, how does he even manage to, uh, you know, to just stay here and not go back and, and work and this and that. And at that time I was 19. So I was kind of like, and I was married, or married already, so I had to hustle it out. So I got inspired by that brother, you know, I started working a little bit with him, like, you know, getting inspired, uh, even paying him to do some, some of, uh, some of those, those works uh, that I used to, to, to use for my business, etc. But yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's nice, man. I'm going I'm to... I'm I'm going to contact this brother and send him the interview, inshallah. Uh, so shout out to, yeah. to Abu Mustafa. Anyway, so 
طيب so let me ask you a question right uh, before you once you decided that you want to learn Arabic now let's make, let's make clear that you never had other than you know the little studies with the GC GC what is it GCSE GCSE yeah GCSE uh, studies uh, yeah if if you were to think about the Ben Yadik curriculum mm -hmm. uh, I when I got to Egypt, I started from book one, part two. So, okay. uh, you know, so I passed the Kaifa uh, Haluka, Assalamu Alaikum, Masmuka. I knew that stuff and I knew a few words. That's it. Oh, okay, Alhamdulillah. So, but you never had, like, your parents are not Arab and, you know, you went from literally native English speaker yeah. to starting to learn Arabic. Yeah. Okay, so once you decide to to, you know, that, okay, I need to learn Arabic, I want to learn Arabic, and you find a place to learn Arabic, in this case, Egypt, what was yeah. the, the feelings like? Was you afraid of something? Yeah, uh, I think a lot of brothers, when they, when they go abroad, they have this misconception that uh, as soon as you get on the flight, uh, you've come, you're coming from a place from, from London, from New York, from America, from UK, anywhere from the western world and as soon as you get on the flight you land in cairo and now suddenly you're going to become talib al ilm and you're going to yeah. you know you're going to put 100 percent in and you're going to be very pious you're going to be praying qiyam every night no. uh, a lot of brothers had this misconception and uh, i quickly realized like a day or two in when i met the brothers who were living in my flat and stuff that uh it's not too different to real life like mm -hmm. you can't have this uh conception misconception in your in your mind that suddenly you're going to become a dif different person yeah you have to be yourself in order to uh realize what you can gain no um, definitely uh this is this is crazy because in i mean it happens you know a lot of brothers they even myself when i first got to egypt i was like Man, i'm going to a muslim country and you know I yeah 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 you know, it's true, yeah. yeah, you have the adhan, you have, but in many, many, many different things is worse than, yeah. than even yeah. the United Kingdom, I would say. Like, there is a brother, yeah. Allah, uh, he's in Qatar right now, shout out to Abu Hanifa. He used to tell me, like, uh, my iman is higher in London because I'm busy with da'wah and I'm busy teaching, I'm busy this and I'm busy yeah. that. And, you yeah. know, than, than Egypt, actually. Yeah. So now let me ask you a question. That that happens to me a, a few times as well. It's the same thing that you're you're with you're with a, your group of brothers and you go to the masjid for for salah and you, you can pray tarawih there. But the vibe, the the feeling that you get in London with your community in your masjid, uh, you can sit in the front row with your boys drinking no. a cup of coffee. It's, it's not the same. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. This is why a lot of this is good that we're talking about this because a lot of people they think that. I can only become fluent in Arabic or I can only learn Arabic if I go to an Arab country or if I go to, you know, somewhere like Egypt or somewhere like Mauritania or somewhere like that. And the reality yeah. is that I've met many, many different brothers literally from the beginning. Like, I only know Arabic from them and they are obviously from the UK, for example. One example is in Birmingham, once I was walking in the street, I was selling at that time, like selling in the street. And uh, this brother came to me. Apparently, he said that he he smelled from me that I wasn't from there. I, I think I, I was wearing sandals, sandals or something, and it was probably like <laughs> sand or on it or something like that. And he came to me and said, "Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh." Ma sha Allah, na minay na anta. I said, "Well, ma sha Allah, you know your Arabic is really good. Where you, what do you study?" He said, "I study here." In, in Birmingham, I was like, wow, you know, so, uh, so definitely, I mean, it's like Talib al-Ilm and, you know, learning Arabic is, it's not restricted by a place or by a location. You can learn it anywhere. Yeah. My so, personal uh, opinion is that, that the location, uh, you can be, it can be done anywhere. Uh, the, the, the location can accelerate your learning. Mm -hmm. So if you go to Egypt, for example, or you go to anywhere, any, any other Arab speaking, uh, Arabic speaking country, you have the chance to accelerate that learning. But no. It, it, in no, no means, no means does it, does it uh, you know, t mean that you can't learn it anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And sometimes it might even, it might, it might like make your learning slower. Slow 
Yeah, because yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. brothers, they, I know many, many brothers, they got to, to uh, I mean, it wasn't a, a point where myself, I, I speak French, you know, there is a French community in Egypt. I speak English, there is the yeah. UK and the US community. I speak uh, yeah. Spanish, alhamdulillah, I wasn't no, I was, I met like two Spanish brothers five years being in Egypt. But the thing is that many times I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I speak French or I wouldn't say I speak English because many brothers, they get so used to talking to you in English and at the end of the day, it just feels like you, you're back home and yeah. you, you, you don't do yeah. anything else than speaking yeah. English. But definitely when that you... very, very quickly in my flat as well. Very quickly, we, nah. said, uh, we said only Arabic speaking. After a week, we're all speaking English, no problem. It's, yeah. it's like you're back normal living so yeah, yeah it does slow your learning down a lot mm -hmm. my main adv advice all the time for brothers coming new it was to to stick with the african brothers or the arab brothers yeah. like the libyan the you know jazairian from uh, algeria someone who can't speak the same language as you yeah exactly to struggle with yeah. them like oh, mother, mother, <laughs> yeah. that would be <laughs> That was really, really good. I mean, that helped me a lot. Yeah. Okay, so uh, before knowing Arabic, right? Can you can you name uh, three daily frustrations that you had as a you know normal Muslim? As a uh, from an Islamic perspective, um, number one would be not understanding the Quran. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's that's that was a massive frustration. You're praying yeah. Tarawih, you're you're standing behind the Imam for one and a half hours, two hours, and you don't understand the word he's saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it makes no sense. It gets tired as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's number one. Uh, number two, um, I, I number two, I didn't have any languages behind me. Uh, mm. I speak English. Uh, I'm from a Pakistani background. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, I can understand Punjabi and Urdu, but I can't speak them uh, yeah. because I just grew. Up, I grew up in a English-speaking household, mm -hmm. uh, so so I I didn't have any languages, uh, you know, in my portfolio. No. Uh, and um, and the third thing was uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I can't really think of a third one at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think it's like so general. When it comes to be, being a Muslim, you there's always little frustrations when it comes to like, you know, obviously understanding the Quran. Sometimes you might have a question and and uh, and some books are not even translated to English or the information is limited yeah. online as well. And you can't even call yeah. by yourself a scholar, you know, yeah. and things like that. And I'm not saying that there's only scholars who speak, uh, you know, Arabic, but uh, but, you know, sometimes you might need something related to, I don't know, going to an Arab country or something like this. Something that only an Arab person can, can answer. Um, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it's definitely frustrating sometimes. So, I think so, uh, uh, a frustration, actually, would, uh, would be that I hadn't traveled uh, much. Hmm. Like, I've been to uh, Umrah, I've been to visit family, uh, other places in the world, but I haven't really traveled. I hadn't really traveled. I hadn't been outside of my house uh, you know, by myself mm -hmm. for a long period of time. So that was yeah. uh, probably a third one. So what, 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 uh, okay, so you're 23 right now. In 2017, you was 21 when you went to Egypt. Yeah. Oh, okay. So how do you find the country, by the way? Just living there as it's, a it's, normal it's life. It's very, it's very, yeah, you get very mixed feelings. Like, yeah. uh, you, you feel the vibe that you you got that other and then you got a masjid every two minute walk and mm -hmm. you've got friends and uh, things are cheap uh, you can buy a really nice thing for really low prices you can go you can go places and you can save a lot of money no. but then there's there's the other side of egypt that i'm sure a lot of people who've been to egypt know where you know you have the hassle of dealing with uh, shopkeepers and taxi drivers and you've got people shouting in the street and you've got uh, you know you have the little children who have no respect and the, you yeah. know stuff like this. Well, like these kids, man, wow! I once I was working with my wife with my wife once. I had to grab one of these kids and you know let him know, yo, yeah. 
Bro, I will <laughs> slap the heck out of you. I don't care if you're a kid. Yeah. What's your father? Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. that's something that if you go there with a, with a, with a like Western mentality, you know, I'm not saying yeah. that you, you, because I'm not a violent person. Like, you know, I'm definitely oh, not a, a violent see. person. Yeah. But subhanAllah there, like I was, my, 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 my blood was always boiling for different things. Yeah, no, Just I, absolutely the, exactly the same. With, exactly the same. Uh, while I was there, Within a couple of months, I had developed like a proper anger problem. Yeah. Uh, I would, I, I tried to, you know, not show it, but you know, every little thing that would happen, a taxi driver would say, you know, you didn't pay for this, and you told me to to take you to this place, but you're taking me to this place, yeah. and you know, it would uh, boil your blood. It was, it would get you really mm -hmm. angry. This yeah. why, Subhanallah, after being five for five years in Egypt. First of all, what you yeah. said is, is crazy. Like you get to a point where, where you become a harsh person because you feel like this is the only way of being in this country and you know, surviving. So yeah, that, yeah. That, that's one. And the second thing that I didn't like about there is that I was, I was super protective over my wife. And sometimes it will get to the point where, where you basically cut her off everything. Like you don't let her go outside. Yeah. You don't want her to yeah. you know, answer the door because you don't trust anyone. <laughs> And yeah, after no, no, being that's, there that's for five good. years and then coming to Mauritania yeah. and seeing the respect of the children and seeing, you know, like the taxi driver asking you, like, how much are you willing to pay before you even jump on the taxi? Or, for example, giving him money and he's like, no, no, you, you're giving me too much. There you go. That's, that's your change. I'm like, yeah, I'm staying here. I don't care. I don't care. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, completely different. To you, man. Many times he messes up with your studies as well, you know in Egypt. No, Subhanallah, yeah, once they, they tried to steal my, my bike. But the thing there is that, okay, I do, I don't have a problem if you come to me and, and you try and rob me with a knife, like a man kind of thing, quote unquote, and be like, yo, give me your, your motorbike. But there, what I don't like is this, ah, salamu alaykum, ah, ta'ala, ya amma fita, ya mashallah. Ah, and this mechanic boy, he, yeah. he was like, yeah, don't worry. I asked him, subhanAllah, I, I used to trust him. I used to go to him. He was cool and everything. So I asked him, can you do the, the number plate for me? He was like, yeah, I want to do the number plate for you. No, worry. no, no worries. Bring 600 Junay, bring the motorbike yeah. and bring the paperwork and, your, and a photocopy of your passport. So I brought it to him on uh, Monday, I think it was. He said, come back on Thursday. You will have it, inshallah. Next thing you know, I come back on Thursday. He, he literally closed his, his whole business. He left the, the place <laughs> for a bike. I'm like, what? He, le he literally left the place. I asked the, pe the, the business next to it. I said, where's Rida? He said, uh, oh no, he, he said he was leaving to, uh, to another place. So I asked them, what is the, na the neighborhood? They said, Al Waha. Al Waha is just behind Ashir. So okay. I was like, okay, I, he's in Waha. Okay, I'm, I'm going to Al Waha. Okay, I'm going a, I'm to a, <laughs> drive around the whole Waha. <laughs> And I found him, subhanAllah, and he was so dodgy. Like when I found him, he, his eyes, you can see, you know, the fear. He was, oh, like, and then I seen my bike with a bunch of stickers on it. Like wow, okay, completely yeah, yeah. changed, you know. And I was like, yo, yeah, Rida. And he was like, oh, wait, wait, oh, yeah, yeah, I need to do something. Since that day, I didn't see him back until after two years. And I took my bike that day. I didn't take the 600 pounds. And I used to see, to see him from, from time to time. And I'll be, yo, what's up? I'm not, I'm not a violent person. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't fight for 600 pounds, first of all. That's like, what, 60 pounds? And, uh, you know, it's no, it's no point anyways. So I was like, uh, yeah, Rida, how are you? Uh, you know, where's the, where's the money and this and that? He would, oh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to bring you the... I was like, khair, khair, You know, because you focus on studies. You're not trying to busy your, your head with yeah. this. And, uh, and yeah, one day I just had to, I seen him that day and I had to grab him and Alhamdulillah there was the police around. Police came and put some pressure on him. He gave me 400 pounds. Then the police officer was like, Khalas, just forgive him, forgive him. You know, it's your right. And he's like, forgive him, he's hard. But, you know, I always say that being, if you, if you spend successfully one year in Egypt living, you are definitely, you know, you get the, the certified uh, diploma of patience, you know. Yeah, no, no, 
<laughs> that's true. Crazy, man. Well, I think I think it's important to um, l- let people know as well that this is specifically Nasser City. Uh, yeah, in, in yeah. Other, in, in other places, you don't you don't find the same uh, shidda with the with the characteristics with other like people. where, for example, like, I would say maybe Rehab, places like this. Yeah, rehab is a lot. It's a lot calmer, but it's a lot more expensive. Right. So and 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 you you don't get the same vibe. Nasser City, you do get all of this nasty nasty uh, character that you find on the street. But mm-hmm. at the same time, you don't you, you get really good teachers and you get very good brothers and you got a really yeah, nice massage. Yeah. The, the vibe in the street is just completely different. Mm-hmm. You, it's pros and cons. You have to weigh them out. Yeah, that's definitely the the case because i mean if you're trying to study you definitely have to be around nasser city aishir and you have to hustle out with you know with all of these these people but uh it's true that i'm not trying to it's definitely it was definitely a a life-changing experience and alhamdulillah that you have remind me of that because I, i i'm not trying to you know unmotivate anyone from going to egypt and learn because i believe from by far is the best place to to learn arabic and it's yeah. a life experience as well, you know, to be able to be right. around around people like this. Sometimes you need to, you know, you need to right. know the bad so you know the good. So yeah, alhamdulillah, yeah. I'm sorry no. that I get so <laughs> passionate when talking about Egypt. Subhanallah. Yeah. Now, bef- before I went, I spoke to a lot of brothers, a lot of brothers from London go, a lot of brothers. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I spoke to one brother, uh, many brothers. And uh, they they always say that going to Egypt was the best time that they had in their life, mm-hmm. uh, and and I thought they're over exaggerating or something like that. But after being there and after coming back, I can I can say that it's it's definitely been the best period that I've ever experienced because the amount of experience and that just um, just the joys of of traveling and studying studying yeah. uh, there and also having things other things to do in terms of leisure and play. Uh, and entertainment it's just uh, like a it's a complete package you you get a real good experience mm-hmm. yeah definitely i can say as well that it was the best five years of my life as well you know just the because of the change that i that i how i grew as a person and learned as well and you know or everything that i have accomplished definitely was the best the best, but at the same time, the you know the the worst, yeah. the, the the words, you know what I mean. But alhamdulillah, it pays off. It pays off. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so going back to to the subject, people might be thinking like, hey, are we talking about Arabic or are we talking about life experiences?" But uh, yeah. but yeah, it comes all together when when going to Egypt. So uh, so what was the turning point for you when you when you was like, "Okay, I need to learn Arabic now." Was it like a specific thing that happened in your life or was it like gradually uh it was there yeah there wasn't anything there wasn't a turning point like that like i said because i was free in terms of uh, my employment i wasn't tied down to anything and my my income is you know it it's just uh, dependent on my laptop Mm-hmm. So there wasn't a turning point where I said, okay, now I'm going to leave my job and I'm going to do this and I'm going to sell my house and I'm going to move to Egypt. It wasn't like that. Uh, I, I was, I'm living with my parents. I've got, uh, you know, low expenses. I've got uh, my laptop that I do my business on. So when the brother said to me, uh, why don't you, you know, go, go abroad and study Arabic? It was like, um, okay, let me try it. Now, was he like a, like a, like a OG person in the masjid or like experienced brother or was he just no, like no, one of your boys? No, no, yeah, he's one of my boys. He's, he was just um, a, a very close brother of mine um, who he, he went to, he tried to go to Egypt to study mm. Arabic back in 2016, 17, but his parents wouldn't let him uh, mm. because of, uh, they thought it was unsafe. So he ended up going to uh, Morocco for a few months. Mm-hmm. Um, he found a he found an institution where he could uh, enroll his wife and his kids. Uh, so he studied in uh, Morocco for a few months and then came back to the UK. And he was just trying to convince as many brothers as he could to go abroad and study Arabic. Oh, okay. Is it is he is he Abu um, Abu Tamim? La, not Abu Tamim. Uh, his name is Siraj. Shout oh, out okay. Siraj. <laughs> okay, mashallah. So um. <clears throat> 
Okay, so let's get a little bit into the method uh, that you got, that you, you know, that you used to, uh, to learn Arabic uh, in that particular year. First of all, what markets yeah. did you go to? I didn't study in any markets. Oh, okay. You uh, had a private had teacher or something? I had private teacher, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what was the method he used to, to use for, to teach you guys Arabic? So, uh, in in my time there, I I had uh, three different teachers uh, mm -hmm. for for my main Arabic. Uh, my first teacher, uh, Sheikh Majdi, um, he uh, he was he was very good, mashallah, like excellent. Um, he's one of the OGs. You know, there was there was a few teachers in Marcus Fajr, uh, mm -hmm. like back in the day, and they basically left Fajr and started their own institution. Uh, okay. Sheikh Majdi. Um, so I got there. He gave me a little test uh, to see what level I'm on, and uh, we started from uh, Book One, Part Two of Ben Yadik mm -hmm. curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, and and our our methodology was we had a two-hour lesson every day, mm -hmm. uh, and he would he would give me two hours of homework every day just at the beginning, so I could ease into it. So um, I, my understanding was very poor. I couldn't really understand what he was saying because he only speaks Arabic. Uh, he wouldn't speak English. Mm -hmm. um so we would have to use pictures and we we would just have it would it was a very uh difficult situation at the start for the first month or two because i couldn't really understand what he was saying mm -hmm. but um a lot of people they get cold feet at the start and uh give up but um i think it's important to know that uh within you know six weeks seven weeks it goes very fast very fast seven mm -hmm. eight weeks and, and and suddenly you realize that you're starting to pick up words and you're starting to understand what the teacher is saying. Even if you don't understand what the teacher is saying, like you don't know the meaning of the word, you can, you know, get an understanding of the sentence that he's saying to you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so for the first um, about four months, um, I had uh, Sheikh Majdi for two hours a day for Arabic. Um, and, uh, you know, he was uh, he was quite easy with the homework and stuff. No. And then about three, four months in, I decided to get a supplementary teacher uh, for for speaking. Mm -hmm. So, but, so I got a second teacher. He would come to my flat, um, I think, for one hour twice a week. Okay. Yeah, one hour twice a week, and he developed his own uh, his own supplementary curriculum to the Ben Yadik series. So oh, yeah. he had. You know, book one which had a little bit of a test with all the af'al, all the asma you have to fill in all the tables you have to put in the madi mudari um, and you have to put in for the asma you have to put the jam and the you know all the singular and everything mm -hmm. like that um, so so he would give me all this homework he would be shadid shadid with the homework like very no. very very shadid with the homework uh, to the so point where what was the homework was it memorizing the af'al and the, the vocabulary yeah so yeah, so for the Af'al, as soon as he would come to the lesson, we would have a list of maybe 300 verbs. Mm -hmm. And for the first 10 minutes of the lesson, it would be a drill. Uh, you're saying all the Af'al, Madi, Mudari, Amr, mm -hmm. and the Mustar, uh, and the Fa'il, Maf'ul, mm -hmm. uh, for, for each verb, for all 300 verbs, within 10 minutes you have to go bang, 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 mm -hmm. uh, without any mistakes. No. And, and that process, wow, that process strengthened... It pays off. Arabic, so much. amazing. amazing. Yeah. That's that's exactly the same, uh, the same method. I mean, that I think that's the best method ever. Like, yeah, you no, know, absolutely. Just memorizing absolutely. these conjugations, it just gives you crazy vocabulary. No, absolutely. And so, because uh, if you if you break down your sentence, a lot a lot of what you say, maybe fifty percent or more, is is uh, comes from verbs. No. No. Probably more than that. Probably seventy-five percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The rest is just prepositions and and uh, yeah. names. No. Yeah. So, uh, so what would you say after a year of this of this intense? Oh, so, uh, method? so this was only for the first six months. Okay, that was for the this first was six months. Yeah. Yeah. For the second six months, I changed teacher uh, because okay. the first was wasn't available anymore. Um, so in the second six months. Uh, it was a bit more than six months. It was probably about eight, nine months. Um, I changed my teacher to Ustad Hisham, and 
well, amazing teacher, amazing teacher. He's he he was a young teacher, so he we we had a link. The first mm-hmm. couple of teachers, they were you know in the mid early forties, mid forties maybe. Yeah. But this teacher, he's he's in his late twenties, so we had a connection. We could uh, we could talk about anything. So mm-hmm. we started with uh, three hour lessons uh, every mm-hmm. single day, and um, and we started with the Beni Adik series. Then we started with Ajrumia for Nahu. And mm-hmm. then we started uh, the Ibn Saud um, curriculum as well for, for Nahu and, and Sarf, uh, oh, okay. just filling in the text. Um, so in a three-hour lesson, the first hour, because we had a very good connection, the first hour would be taken up with, you know, what did you do last night? Where did you go? What did you eat? Um, then we would start, to, we'd go on a, you know, completely different tangent we would start talking about things back home and you know uh it had nothing to do with the lesson but no. i didn't have a problem with it at all because it was all being done in arabic yeah, it's definitely. part of my learning mm-hmm. so so a lot of people would actually think i'm paying this teacher but we're just having a chat but yeah, yeah, yeah. in my, my mind it's still uh very good in yeah. terms of your learning it is yeah. it is worth it it is worth it طيب فانا اكيد الان بانك تستطيع الفهمة والتكلم ب... بطريقة أفهم. سهلة نعم أفهم الحمد لله ما شاء الله فبعد هذه السنة بهذه الطريقة آه... كيف آه... يعني ماذا تقول من من واحد إلى عشرة مستواك في في التكلم وفي الفهم آه ب... بعد السنة نعم آه... في الكلام أظن بلغت حول تسعة أو عشرة الله ولكن الله. ولكن هذا هذا كان بعد كثير من من المراجعة وكثير من من الممارسة ولكن إذا إذا فكرت أن أن تراجع فتستطيع أن تفشل نعم صحيح اذا ت... اذا تنسى المراجعه بلا شك ان الكلمات وكل شيء يمشي من تنسى كل شيء تنسى كل شيء في ممكن شهر او او يو نو خمس خمسه اسبوع نعم بلا شك <تصفيق> so, الحمد لله اي ثينك لايك ذيس ميثود سبحان الله اي هافن سين اني وان هو وين ثرو ذيس ميثود هو هافن بيكم If done correctly, who haven't become fluent, uh, because that's what, this is what I call fluent in Arabic in one year. You're able to understand the average conversation, maintain a conversation, you know, pick a yeah. book and, and read literally one page and maybe not know one, two, three words. And, but alhamdulillah, be able to, to go to, because of the way you study it, like conjugations and everything, you are able to take, for example, a dictionary and be like, Okay, what does this word mean? Okay, uh, whatever, like Nasara. What does Nasara mean? So you go Nasara, mm. Nasara Yansuru, Yani Ladi Yagli Bala. You be like, okay, I understand mm. this now. So Nasara Yansuru, let me see what is, is it Nansuru or Yansuru or is it Yansara? And then yeah. by this method, subhanAllah, it not only gives you the tools of, of finding what you don't know, But it gives you super, you know, strong foundations in terms of vocabulary. And now when you go into grammar, you can actually sit down in front of a teacher and let him explain you the class in, in Arabic. Instead of saying, yeah, yeah, absolutely. you know, syntax yeah. of the sentence. He actually says, yeah, and, yeah. You, and you understand, yeah. you know. So yeah. I'm super glad that, I'm, that, uh, that I have the opportunity to, to interview you because this... You know, this eyes opening for a lot of people. And I've, I've seen people going through other programs like, you know, in Merkez Al-Furqan or Merkez Al-Ibana or Merkez, different Marrakesh where they have their, their own curriculum just to make it seem nice. But sometimes you just need to stick to simplicity, man. You know? Yeah, yeah. And Absolutely. to what, what works and not trying to reinvent the wheel. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, with my with my the teacher Sheikh Ustad Hisham that I had for the second six months, uh, we picked up Ben Yadik, Ibn Saud, Ajrumiya, and all these things. But in terms of following the actual curriculum, it wouldn't it, we wouldn't be like okay, we have to finish chapter one in this this two weeks. Mm-hmm. Like I I know so many brothers who came to Egypt 
And within um, eight months, they had finished all four books of mm -hmm. Ben Yadik. But you, they couldn't still hold a simple conversation. Mm. Um, there's no point. There's no point in you know trying to finish the curriculum when you're not soaking anything in. Yeah, 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 definitely. So, so uh, you, literally after after like 14 months of of being there, I had only reached like you know halfway through book three or the start of book three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we weren't too, we weren't too bothered with uh, with where we reach in the curriculum yeah. as long as. Uh, what's what's being uh, taught is really soaking in, and you're actually learning something. Yeah. You know, is it yeah. different? Yeah, exactly. I mean, even myself from Arabia, I think to be honest, I don't even think I got into book three. Uh, I remember yeah. in the in the Marcus I was, it was in Alex, and there were I think fourteen or twelve Mustawayat, and I only got to mm -hmm. eight Mustawa eight, and then I was I'm just going to Azurumia now. Like I felt. You know, I yeah. felt like I had enough vocabulary, yeah. but, but why? Because I memorized, as you said, I actually memorized all my vocabulary throughout the, you know, all the, the, the text yeah. that we that we done until then. So, yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, it's no point in just trying to finish the book to say, mashallah, and come yeah. to the top. Yeah. <laughs> so, so throughout, um, throughout learning the Arabic language, how many aha moments did you have? <clears throat> Yeah, I, I, I read that question and I was a bit confused. <laughs> really? Uh, if, what you meant by aha? Uh -huh. I think is a is, is a is a is a way of spe is speaking in, in in America. So you know, I'm no, I'm, no, I, yeah, I know. Like, as in, there's a light bulb moment. Aha! Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if you guys yeah, say no, this much in in the UK. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, do you have any light up? light up moment where you was like oh it's one lot no, there, there's been a there was probably a few uh the first one uh is like i said after the first two months when you start understanding what your teacher's saying no. that's like a real light bulb because you you understand ah oh, like a, a switch in your yeah. in your brain you're like oh okay i understand the link between this and this and oh no i understand that. And many times, doesn't it happen to you that you be like, okay, now I understand this and this, and I understand all of this that I didn't understand back yeah, then. Yeah, no, no, exactly. <laughs> you understand one concept, and it opens you up to this entire, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. science. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So this why. The first one, this, yeah. this why, as you said, as you said, uh, it's really important that the first month you actually realize that you will struggle for at least. I would say four months into this method. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And then yeah. it will be, it will be, it will be nice after that. Yeah. Okay. So no, the, f the first, the first six months in in Egypt with those first two teachers, uh, it was it was hard. It was uh, to 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 study the language. It was it was difficult because mm. six months go by and you haven't made like much progress at all, and yeah. you're thinking, you're thinking, I really hope that my whole year doesn't turn out like this. Mm -hmm. But then. It's, it's like an exponential graph. Like you start off really slow, but then it goes up and up and up, and then it starts going up like that. Yeah. At one point, it just blows up because you understand all yeah. of the concepts, and it's just about memorizing, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so do you enjoy... I mean, I think you only did private classes, but do you ever try group classes? Um, not for Arabic. Uh, I attended a few uh, pri um, group classes for... Um, for tafsir and for fiqh, uh, but not not many sessions. So I don't re I didn't really have any experience um, at all with group sessions. Oh, okay. So I I believe you. I mean, is there any any reason why you decided to take a private teacher instead of going to a merkez or taking a group yeah. class? Yeah. I mean, I, in in my in my building, the um, the the brothers were about 50 50 50% 50 of them went to uh, markers 50% of them had group uh, had uh, private teachers mm -hmm. and i would hear the pros and cons from both of them the 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 advantages from having group classes is that you have other people maybe 10 people in your class that you can speak with mm -hmm. but um but in term in in my situation i had a replacement for that because my teacher was very good with conversational skills so mm -hmm. So I wasn't missing out on that on that aspect of the group sessions, and with the private sessions, I just found that the one-to-one -one learning, you get a lot more out of your lesson. 
if you have three hours of one to one with your teacher, you know, have a couple of breaks in that lesson, but mm-hmm. and you have a total you know, control over uh, what's being done in that lesson. Yeah, I, I I don't have experience in group lessons, but I was thinking maybe in a group lesson, the teacher's going to maybe be focused for 20 minutes on this student and then the next student and then the next yeah. student. Yeah. So, That's so more you don't of get a lot of happens. attention. Yeah. It happens that a lot. And mainly if you are, I mean, people, they have different intentions and they have different uh, levels in terms of uh, yeah. of learning and how fast yeah. they, they can learn something and understand something as well. And many times it happened to me, like, I, I did try both, both, uh, in the beginning, I did group class for like three months. And, uh, and yeah, it was in the beginning is good, you know, because you, you know, you get to, to, to have that conversation and at the same time, it's not too boring. But then once you have that aha moment, as you said, and you start to understand all of this concept and what you should do now in order to literally just, you know, sprint. Then I was like, okay, yeah. let me just take a, 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 private, private. a private teacher. Because many times, I believe that, you know, you might not relate to this, but having different languages in your brain, it does allow you to, to understand mainly Spanish because there was, you know, the Arabs and the Muslims for 800 years in Spain. So we have a lot of words that uh, comes from Arabic. And so many words yeah. and vocabulary was easy for me to, to understand and pick up. But other brothers, they were like, we were Spain. And obviously the teacher, he doesn't speak, Arab, uh, he doesn't speak English. And, uh, yeah. and obviously, you know, you're not just so going to be like, come on, bro. I like, yeah, no, I could relate to that to like a very small extent because of the Urdu and Arab uh, yeah, and uh, Punjabi. Um, because a, a lot of the words, the teacher would say it or even some of the, the verbs, uh, the teacher would say it and I would think, I know that word already. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it was yeah. one of those moments, yeah. Definitely. So what do you think was the hardest part of learning Arabic? Um, not being distracted. No. Uh, that's, that's the hardest thing. What kind of distractions um, do you have? Oh, I'm chilling with the bros, man. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like... Um, if you're in Nassau City, then you know City Stars. City Stars, yeah. the, the local uh, mall. Uh, oh, yeah. Like, it's very easy, especially with... We had a building of like 30 English brothers. Wow. Yeah? All, of us, all of us speak English. And all of us are the same age. And all of us, you know, we, we can chill. So Inshallah. it's so easy. It's so easy to get distracted and say, uh, okay, forget homework today. We're going out. To, yeah. to the restaurant, something yeah. like that. It's so easy to, we're going to the juice bar, and, uh, you know, Asab bil Lemon. you know? <laughs> no, nah. subhanAllah. It's so yeah, easy to Yeah, I think when you're married, <laughs> it's, it's different than when you... Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, because imagine you're with, you're with 30 brothers, unmarried, and, you know, you just, you're all the same age, you're all chilling. Yeah, it's yeah, easy. Yeah. It's easy. I remember, I mean, the first three months I was... In Egypt, I was by with brothers, living with brothers. I completely hated it. Like I was like, you know, in terms of like how the, I'm a I'm a really like I, you know, I have rules in my house. Like for example, you cannot step in here without your sandals. You you can't step here. No, with, yeah. You know no. things like that. No, I'm exactly like, the same. Crazy. I'm exactly the same. You see? Uh, so yeah, in, I'm exactly the same. Way. In my flat, there was there was three brothers. Um, but in the in the twelve in in the about the fourteen fifteen months that I was there, uh, you know the people the my flatmates changed over a few times, and I would, uh, you know someone someone would be leaving and then someone would take his place and uh, someone would recommend this brother oh yeah this brother's uh, this brother's clean and this brother <laughs> is a very good character but then you, they come to the flat and. <laughs> It's not, it's not what you expected at all. Yeah. You know, the bath, the bathroom's always in a tip, and the kitchen's always got dirty dishes in the sink. No. <laughs> and, and you know, the tiles are always dirty. He never mops. Mm. He never hoovers. He never does it. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it it might sound like uh, we're just complaining, but it makes a big difference to the environment that you're learning in, especially yeah. if your especially if your teacher's coming to your flat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like you need. You need a you need a clean place. Your teacher can't come to 
you know, you're sitting on the dining table having your lesson <laughs> and there's dirty dishes and, uh, you know, leftover chicken boxes uh, on the table. Yeah, it's many like lion in the whole apartment and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have your own room at least? Yeah, yeah, no, we had a. Well, I, I lived in Mentaka Thamina. Um, okay. It, it wasn't really Hay Thamin and it wasn't really Hay Lashir. It was in the middle. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, no, we had a good flat three. We had three rooms and, and a big living room. So we had uh, one bedroom each. Yeah. Oh, okay, Alhamdulillah. And I mean, sometimes I want to say, like, You know, sometimes it's not even like everyone has habits that for other people it might be like, oh, this is dirty or, you know, for example, I don't know, whatever it might yeah. be like, like me sometimes, for example, if I'm doing something, I'm not going to wash the dishes right now. I'm just going to leave them there, even if yeah, there's yeah. 15 of them <laughs> and finish yeah, my yeah, stuff. Yeah. And then, but, you know, when you're living with other brothers, it's hard to adapt to everyone's uh, daily habits. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Subhanallah. No, absolutely. So, uh, so the last two questions, the first one is how of an impact has had the learning the Arabic language right now in your life and how is your life different? Oh, it's like, like it's like night and day, man. It's, uh, from, from going uh, as the example that I gave about praying, uh, you're standing behind the Imam praying to and you don't understand the word that he's saying no. and changing that into a situation where you're praying behind him. And you understand 90% of what he's saying, mm -hmm. it makes a massive difference. The, the connection between you and the Quran and you and Allah and your Iman is just uh, an experience that you can't get anywhere else. No, definitely. And, uh, and what, would, what would your advice be for someone that acknowledges the importance of learning the Arabic language? However, he didn't start yet for whatever reason. Oh, there's nothing holding you back. I actually, uh, one of the brothers uh, who's, you know, he works with the uh, uh, Quran Markaz, yeah? he gave me a call yesterday. He's mm -hmm. saying, how's your, how's your murajah going and how's your hif going? And I said, you know, I've been struggling a bit. I haven't really, you know, kept up with my hif. And he said, there's nothing holding you back. If you, if you, if you plan to make a plan to make a plan, you're never going to get around to it. Just make yeah. the plan now. Make your plan to start. And... That's exactly the same with the Arabic. With Arabic, within the past year and two years and three years, there's been so many uh, uh, teachers from Egypt that have uh, have taken up the platform to teach online. No. Yeah, there's so many teachers now. There's so many teachers. Uh, and I think that uh, our lives might be busy in the Western world, but um, all of us can take out even an hour a week. All of us. No, no. Uh, take out an hour a week to, to have a lesson and even if the an hour a week it's not a lot it's not a lot at all but at least it's something so no. for all you know you could start with an hour a week and after four weeks you might decide to you know i'm enjoying this so i'm going to up it to one hour every three days then one hour every day and then it's going to develop to a stage where you know a year down the line two years down the line you might decide okay it's time for me to go abroad and study full time no definitely definitely yeah that's a very good advice man i think that everyone i mean this is one of the reasons why you know under andalus institute we focus on teaching people online and uh and you know by the way i just want to let people know if they are actually interested uh, about learning the arabic language to check out the link we have in the description where i share with you guys the my case study basically of how i went from zero to fluent in arabic in 10 months Uh, with one single book and one hour per day. And that single book is Arabia Bain Aydik. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah I highly recommend them to uh, to check that out if they are looking to start as soon as possible. And, uh, and yeah, thank you very much, man. Zafir or Zafir. Barak nope. uh, you know, for your time and, uh, and sharing this story with us. And there's many things that we can say about, you know, studying the Arabic language and... Uh, and mainly studying the Arabic language in Egypt, but, uh, you know, we have limited time. So sorry for yeah. the viewers, and, uh, and uh, I would recommend them to subscribe to the channel for the upcoming different uh, How I Learn stories, How I Learn Arabic stories. And, uh, yeah, we'll conclude with this, and we'll finish the interview. 
سو so, جزاكم الله خير يا ظفير والسلام عليكم وجزاكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته